I'm going to look at this thing today. This is a Heathkit IT28 capacitor tester. So I'm going to do a refurbishment on this. I'm going to pull it apart, see what's wrong with it, fix it up hopefully. I haven't even powered this thing up. I've got no idea if it even works. I'm going to do all this refurb work before I even turn it on for the first time because who knows what could go wrong. It could blow a valve or whatever if there's a fault inside it. So I'm going to do a refurb on it first, then power it up. I also need to convert it from 120 volts to 240 volts as well, which I believe can be done. You know, we'll work through this thing, so stick around. I think the cat scan's broken. I think we need to open it up instead. Okay, let's get this thing apart. Two screws here. This casing is bent up here, so the storage has been hit or dropped or something on this top edge. Or whether something's dropped onto it, or whether it's been dropped upside down, I don't know. I need to fix all this casing up as well. First thing is to get it apart, which is not easy because it's bent. Here we go. So I haven't had this thing powered up at all. So this has come from the USA, I think it was. There's no power on these caps. There's no way it's going to be powering these caps after two months. It's very unlikely anyway. So I'm not worried about that. It should be safe. But normally when you're working on something like this, you want to make sure the capacitor is discharged because they can hold hundreds of volts and they give you one hit of a jolt and possibly potentially even kill you. You need to be careful about stored energy in devices like this. Even just working on it, when I do power it up, there's hundreds of volts flying around in this thing. It's not like low voltage stuff. These are dangerous. So you have to be careful. So there's a bit of dust in here. You know, it's not been messed with. It's still got a dust residue on it. You know, on these resistors covered in dust. The problem with these things, these old resistors, they too tend to leak. They end up going a higher resistance. So you have to check every single resistor to make sure they're still within their tolerance. Now these have all got a silver band on them. So last band is silver, which means that is a 10% tolerance on resistance value. If it was a gold band, it'd be a 5% tolerance. So as long as they're within 10% of the original marking, then I'm happy with that. If they've gone greater than 10%, then I'll need to replace them. So you've got some precision stuff over here. You've got to be careful about these precision resistors. Uh, but yeah, lots of these carbon composite resistors in here. So this is doing something. I don't know what that's for. <laughs> There's the main power transformer here. And the wiring down here, which I need to change to make it 240 volt. But I'll do that when I change the power cord. Because that's part of that process is changing the power cord and changing the voltage. But apparently it can be changed to uh, 240 volt. So I'm going to start off by testing capacitors. Just get that job out of the way. See what this thinks of it. Fifty-two microfarad, point four ohms. Well, it says something. <laughs> Forty. Oh, that's quite high. Fifty-two and point five one. And that's probably the same value cap as well. It's point zero five microfarad. And we've got over here some 200 volt caps. I think that's a 5 or 0.5. That's a 0.1, that's a 0.5. Did measure 0.5, this one couldn't measure. So those probably are right. Let's measure DC leakage. There could be some leakage coming through from the valve though. So maybe I should unplug the valve. There we go. Right. Just in case there's leakage through there. Uh, 0.7 meg. And that one there, 270k. That does appear to be leakage. So it could be leakage from something else, it could be nothing. So let's start the tedious task of checking all the resistors to make sure they look about right. Now these ones are going to be hard because they're across these trimmers. So they're obviously there to pad the trimmers out, so these ones probably don't matter too much. I mean if I've measured them, it's probably going to be pointless because they're across the trimmers. So it's 14k. All right, I'll measure this one here. All the same values as well. 11k. This one here. 23k. So yeah, and these are all the same values. So kind of pointless because they're across trimmers. Let's measure this one here, which is across the capacitor to drain the capacitor down. So this is not going to help. Yeah. See, I can't really measure that without disconnecting it. I don't really want to do that either. But if that's only just to drain the capacitor. Probably not so important. Um, how's that hooked up? It's going to there. There's a white wire, is it? Pink wire goes to this one. These two caps are in series. So what that will likely be is now resistor here across this cap. 
So these resistors are probably here to provide balancing. So you've got two caps in series, sometimes stick a resistor across both. That gives you an equal voltage across both capacitors. So I'm not about to measure this, am I? That's all trick to make sure the balance is correct between the caps. Otherwise, if you put two caps in series, say if you've got two 200 volt caps, right, you're running on a 400 volt power supply, for example. You could potentially end up with one capacitor with 250 volts across it and one capacitor with 150 volts across it. That would be imbalanced. So the trick is to put two resistors in series in parallel with those capacitors. So that means the resistors will hold the voltage right. So they'd be balancing the voltage out like a resistor divider. So it means the center point will be half of the voltage, which means both capacitors will see the same voltage. In case you realize that's what they do. And if they got value, it probably won't matter too much as long as they're not open circuit. We're getting 24K, we've got two resistors in parallel there. And here you've got two resistors in parallel, so it's your power handling. Similar values. Then we've got this one here. This is all charging up capacitors and stuff, this is driving me nuts. <laughs> inconclusive, these big ones are all inconclusive. I might have to come back later on and do some of these, like disconnect them and measure them individually. Let's measure some other ones. Let's come down here. It's on the back of a valve. 51k, that sounds normal. Is it orange, black, something? Can't quite see the colours. It looks like brown, black, brown, actually. Hmm. They might be being affected by the valve. This has been pretty inconclusive so far. It's not a very good way of testing resistors, is it? 241k, yeah, we've finally got a decent one. And that is uh, red, red, yellow. So it's 220. That should be 220k, so that's 10% out. It's right borderline, isn't it? It's like 10% high. I think I might leave that one alone. This one here is also red, red, yellow. That's 230, it's looking alright. Okay, 670 ohms. That blue, grey, brown. Maybe it's violet. Violet would be right. Grey would be higher. So yeah, that seems alright. Looking promising so far. 1.5 meg. Uh, we've got a green band there, so probably. So brown, green, green. So that's 155. This one here. Looking promising so far. 96 ohms. You've got brown, black, brown. So it should be 100 ohms, so it's really slightly lower. Tedious, isn't it? <laughs> I've got all these resistors around here to measure. <sighs> I think as I do know from other videos I've seen, like I've seen, I think it's Mr. Carlson's lab, I think did one. And resistor, I think it's this one here, which you can't really see because the lighting, but that one there, um, seemed to play up. But I need to check all of them. And yes, that is tedious. Values are slightly varying, aren't they? They're not perfect values. That's 15. So is that resistor different? I don't think it was different. I think it was a 10. Hmm. What's this one here? That's 39. I'm drifting. So the 39 one is measuring. Well, it's red, red, orange. So that's 220, oh sorry 22, that should be 22k. There could be circuitry affecting that. Because I'm right at the end of the wire connection is. There wouldn't be a higher level though, would it? Let's try to change the switch position. No difference, okay. And then that one here which I measured, which was giving 15, I think that's supposed to be a 10. I'm pretty sure. So I'm suspicious about these two end resistors. We've got a resistor across here, let's measure that one. 700 ohms. Blue, grey, brown. Or is it violet? I don't know. It's hard to say with these old resistors. Blue, grey would be 680. 
So yeah, it's close. That's 45. You've got some over here. So I've got two here which I'm suspicious of at the end of that switch. Did I measure that one? I think I did. 600. Green, blue, brown. Five, six a year. Okay. Brown, black, brown. 0.4 ohms I'm getting across there. My lead resistance is 0.1. So that should be 100 if it's read correctly. So there's probably that switch maybe. 2.3 ohms now. It's probably switch connection and stuff. It's probably other circuitry around it which is fetching it. And yeah, seems that way. Next one, 51k and that's yellow, purple or violet, orange. So that's probably 47. Close enough. Now you've got this position resistors down here. Maybe that's a capacitor. That's a capacitor. There's a resistor. There we go. 2 meg on that one. Uh, 20k on that one. 200 ohms. Let's check it here. 9k. Try and read them now. That's 9k. I'll have to look at the manual for those. So we've got two over here which I'm suspicious about, the rest so far seem fine. Now the ones in here are because wherever your voltage you set to on this, it has to go through those resistors because it goes through the chain, right? So it links through them all. So everything goes through those two. So if those if it's been stressed anywhere, those first ones could go. Which is possibly what's happened. But I'm getting some weird readings on that one. Okay, let's get these resistors out of here. So I've got to cut these things out. After much messing around I managed to find some resistors I can use. I didn't actually have a 22k 1 watt resistor. I've got a 20k and a 2k which is going to have to do the job. I've also got a 10k resistor here to replace the other ones which are suspicious of. There's two here. So I'm going to cut those out because I can't get them off easy because they're wire wrapped through the holes on the switch. So I've got to cut the things off. So we're going to do that. Also we'll be careful not to break the switch in the process of bending these things around. Can't get the cutters in there. Different cutters I needed. Oh, almost knocked my lights over again. Got to move those. I've just got those resistors cut out. Now I've got to try and get ready to put the new ones back in. Put your fresh solder on here. Gives a good starting point. It's not taking very well. Might need to put some flux on there. It would be nice to get the original wires out, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. This one here is really close to the chassis. I'm not liking that. Especially as it's high voltage going through there. I break the wafer switch and completely destroy the thing. <laughs> I think what I might end up doing is putting some tape along the chassis there just to uh, create some kind of layer insulation. I just don't like the fact there's only a really small gap between the chassis and that resistor which is potentially hundreds of volts. I just think that's a bad idea. I'm only using a fairly low temperature on this, only 250 degrees C. I might need to turn this up slightly. So it doesn't struggle so much. Probably trying to do this inside this chassis is not easy. Not much room here. So once I'm done I want to be able to move this up out of the way and bend it up like this. Yep, that should be good. Now I've got to put the other one, the other pair, in that spot next to it. So I'm hoping that this isn't basically the only thing that's wrong with this, is that it's just this and I can just um, Swap it to power lead, convert it to 240 volt, and power it up and give it a try. I might, I'd like to get it done today. I think there's no reason why we can't. This is the only thing we've found so far. It's probably fine. There's probably not much wrong with it, which is always nice, I suppose. Minor appears always nice. I'll probably put some heat shrink or something over this. Oh, maybe I won't actually. Might need a heat dissipation. I think I might put some in there to secure it all together so it doesn't actually flood around. A lot of this will do. Put over the top of that as well. This stuff's getting a bit old, it's getting a bit gloppy. That's a word, isn't it? Gloppy. I don't want to cover up too much because I don't want them to uh, trap the heat in. I just want them to be held in place. Because these have got thinner leads on than the originals. 
So whilst we're doing that actually, we can do the power cord stuff because that's this side. Once we've got to get this cable strain relief out to change the mains cable now. Now we've got to a point where we can probably do that. We'll try and get this out. I did buy a proper tool for this. It hasn't arrived yet. So I have to keep bodging it with the pliers for now. Because I've actually got to swap this out. I've got to put a new cable on and swap this out. I'll make this hole here bigger and get a gland for it and put that in there. But without the proper tool it makes it a bit harder. So this is a three core cable which is soldered directly onto these pieces of the tabs here. It's actually through those holes. So I've got to pull those out. I'll increase my iron temperature a little bit actually. Make it a bit easier. There's one. Earth is in the middle. I also have to rewire this transformer for 240 volts so we need to do that too. It would have been easy if I put some fresh solder on this and had a bit of bigger tip on it. But um, I'm being lazy about changing my soldering on it. This is going to cost me, I think. It's always the last one. It's always the last one that gives trouble. Have you ever found that? You know what you do, it's always the last one. There you go. So that's the cable off. That can go in the bin. Don't need that. So now I've got to make this hole here bigger. I've got the hole opened up now for the gland, so the gland will go through. I've got to put these wires on. Actually, before I put these wires on, I need to do something. I need to put these through the casing. But first I need to fix the casing, because the casing is dented. So I'm almost ready to put the wires on. I'm a bit premature here. Nobody wants that. So I won't put that on just yet. Because once I put this on, I can't get the casing on otherwise because there's the whole casing is not big enough for the plug. It's the problem with these. So I need to change that casing first because I need to take the dents out of it. I'll take the dents out of the casing, then I can put the wire on. Okay, at least I realised before I put the wire on. So I'm going to take this handle off so I can straighten the chassis out. Hopefully I can get in there with this flat blade. Looks like I can. Which is slipping off though. It's not really the right size screwdriver for this. That one's going. It's got a uh, flat inside the uh, hexagonal there. Here's the handle. Now you've got to flatten this out without flattening all these ribs at the same time. I need a smallish flat surface to do this on. Two hours later. So I'm just going to put the cable on. I've already done the chassis straightening up now. That's a lot straighter than it was before. Still not wonderful, but it's good enough. It's pretty close. So now it's going to be fresh solder on these connections so when I put the cables on I've got a nice fresh joint to go onto. I'm not trying to battle the old oxidisation and stuff like that. If this is all good to start with now then I can just put the wire through and just let go and it's done. So I've got to rewire this transformer which I'll do afterwards. I can put these connections on first and I can do the transformer. So there's also a spare tab here which I think is what's supposed to be used for rewiring a transformer. So you can put those in series instead. Somehow I've got to figure that bit out yet. Gained on. A bit of bloody fit after all this. <laughs> I'm going to need some pliers to get this in, I think. Um, oh, I need those big ones. So I'm still waiting for the proper tool for this. I really wish it had arrived, it would have been nice. It might. Gland is in. Give it a yank. Yeah, that's good. Happy with that. Well, happy-ish with that. I wouldn't say happy. Anyway, it's on. So what I've got to do now is rewire this transformer. So the green and black which comes up to this here to the switch, which is obviously this is at 120 volts existing, that's what we come down here to terminal one. The red wire can stay where it is on that middle terminal, on that terminal two and this black and yellow has to come over to terminal 1 so the black and green and the black and yellow are connected together as a loop that's fine so all you've got to do is cut the green wire from this end bring it down and the same for the yellow bring this one over there's not a lot of slack there so 
it could be interesting but it should be enough hopefully so let's get this one cut it off so yeah that reaches fine I'm going to do the same thing with the yellow one I'll get that as long as I can as well so as much wider flavour as possible right there you go I say I've got just enough on there to reach, see? I've got to kind of overlap it a little bit, I think. See, I've got to do this. So I'll strip this off here, run around it with a knife. There's one wire. I'm not pushing very hard, I'm just trying to cut through the fabric a little bit. That's what I'm trying to do. There we go. Alright. Now this terminal lug has been sitting here for a long time. So I should definitely put some flux on this. I don't think I've got enough wire to wrap the yellow one around. I don't think that's possible. So just make do with that one. That's kind of Wrap it a little bit, I suppose. We can just get a little bit on there. Alright, oh, let's put some flux on it. Oh, yuck. Oh, sorry, my fingers. No, that'll do. <laughs> this tube's still leaking. You better try it in a minute. See if it goes bang. So that's what I measure these capacitors because I'm not completely convinced these caps are okay because I was getting leakage in circuit so I've disconnected them from the chassis connection I'm just doing a DC resistance measurement see if I get any kind of connection between this cap okay nothing really showing up there okay let's check the other one it's got a little bit going on but DC it's looking Kind of okay. That initial charge up, then it disappeared. So DC resistance isn't looking too bad. Actually, let's measure capacitance with this. Let's see what this says. It says I've got the thing here anyway. Point 0.1. Yep, 100 nanofarad. That's exactly what it's supposed to be. Let's check the other one. Point 0.5. That's what's supposed to be as well. So that's fine. Let's check it with a capacitor tester. Just to be absolutely sure, although I'm not sure what this will think of them. Capacitor tester says 16.5 ohms ESR. Hmm. This is really meant for electrolytics, though, so I'm not quite sure if it's rallied or not. This one says 2.5 ESR, but also gave a capacitance. DC resistance is the main thing I think, so DC leakage doesn't seem to be an issue, but then it's going to chassis anyway, so I think we're alright. I, mean, I could do a high voltage chest on it I suppose, but uh, yeah, I think I'm satisfied, it's probably okay for now. I may change them later on, for the time being I'll live with it. Put it back on again. So I've cleaned the switches up, I've got power, well ready as you go. I haven't powered it up yet, this will be the first time I powered it up. There could be magic smoke, there could be explosions, there could be things catching fire. We don't know yet. There's only one way to find out and that's to turn it on. This is always the nervous bit. So I've got the control set at 3 volts, wherever this lowest setting is on voltage. Discharge mode, power switches off, capacitance central, gen internal, I don't know what it is for. I think we're ready to try turning this on. I should have my meter here at the ready actually. Because I'm probably going to need to check the voltages pretty quickly. And I should probably refer to the circuit diagrams actually before I do that to make sure I'm testing things which may blow up if they're overpowered. Let me do that. So I think I've figured out what I need to test. Of course, these two here should be 6.3 volts, I believe. And from that point there to this point here should be about 600 volts. And then from that point there to this point here, I think, should be about 200 volts. Those are DC, that's AC. I'm going to test this one first. But it could still all explode and go to you know, smoke and stuff before we do that. So I'm going to zoom out a bit first in case something does explode and smoke. And let's turn the power on. So that's power going to the unit. No current draw yet. That's a good sign because the switch isn't turned on. Let's turn on the switch. 
switch is on, it's drawing 40 watts and it's dropping down 22 watts because you're dropping okay let's measure some voltage on here again 6 volts AC good enough DC let's go from here to here should be about 600 looks like it's charging up obviously as the valve's warming up okay, about 570 there I'm doing 220 volt input AC so it's going to be a bit low so that's 570 there and I think this should be about 200 well enough in there so maybe I'm measuring that wrong Maybe it's here. No, I don't think that's right. There's one other thing I'm not sure about here. Yeah, so we've got 600 there. Let's put the voltage up a little bit to, say, 230. And that's voltage. It should come up slightly more. So back to AC. Measure across here again. Careful where I'm sticking my fingers. There you are. 6.2 volts. That's perfect. And back to the AC again. Over here. On these ones. And that is... 600 that's fine that's right I've just got to check that 200 volt output though I'm not sure where that is I need to find that let's turn this back off again for now so I'll turn my lights off to try and see the magic eye it's not very bright this one they don't tend to be very bright anyway but this one's looking particularly dim let's see if we can get any kind of activity out of this I need to put a capacitor on this in fact before I do that I'm going to measure the output this voltage to make sure the output voltage looks okay it's going to be grainy I'm sorry about that because I've got the lights off so I'm going to stick these probes in here like that We'll put it on to leakage, set 3 volts, and we're getting 2. Point. Oh, look, we're getting 3 volts. 6. Get these connections better. Connections aren't great. 5.6. So 10 is 9.6. 15 is almost 15. 25 is 26. 50 is 48. 100 is 99. 150 is 151, 200 is 200, bang on, 250 is almost 250, 300 is basically bang on, 350, a couple of volts down, 400 is bang on, is that 450, can't see from here, yep 450, that's 5 volts high, slightly higher end, 500 is almost bang on, 600 is almost bang on, excellent, so the actual output voltages are looking really good certainly close enough for me to be happy with so um, that's good this charge has gone to zero excellent and I've hooked up a 10 microfarad cat which is rated at I should measure that the 450 volts so I can't go too wrong with that so we'll do a leakage test on that and I don't know if you saw it but the eye closed up and then it opened again let's get closer let's open again so it should open as it charges up. Yep. The tube is very slightly turned, I think. It should open. That's only at 25 volts. Maybe something else going on here. I'm trying to put a higher voltage in and see what it does for it. Here we go. Now drop down. Now it's open. Okay. It's just taking a bit longer to get there. So this will probably need calibrating as well. It's got adjustments on the side which I'll have to look at. That's not opening. That's hurry, is it? If I go up and down, then it opens. I'm not sure that's right. So there may be something else going on here, which I don't know about yet. Mind you, I just put it on electrolytic. Does that matter? I don't know. Maybe. Um, let's try it again. Yeah, there we go. Now I put an electrolytic. It's changed it. Okay, this idiot is driving it, that's the problem. There we go. I think it must put more, uh, more current through or something. So 200 volts, that should open up. Starting to go. Here we are. Yep. 250. Hopefully it opens up. Yep, I can see it's starting to go. I think it starts to need a calibration though, it won't be aligned correctly. Yeah, it's opening up now. I'm actually wondering how hot those resistors are getting too. I should get my uh, thermal camera out and see how hot they get. 
because we've got that current going through those resistors. Well it does at least seem to be working this far. Might be the end of the calibration issue there. It might be a point where the alignment's not right and this means it's not quite right those upper end. It's possible. Or oh, this capacitor is leaking. Discharge it. Put the voltage back down to a safer level. Now how do we use this part? I don't know. Scales, capacitance, in a scale. So this is a, what did I say it was? 10 microfarad. I think this is a farad scale. I think, I don't know. Well it's got one, so I put one there, right? It's about there. It's also got, yeah, there's a 10 over here as well. So it might cover two ranges. And we'll see if we can get anything from there. No, bring it around this one. Nothing there. I'm not sure which range supposed to be on. Nothing there. Nothing there. That's one. See nothing happening there. Oh, we've got something there. There we go. So I'm not quite sure what the ranging is on this thing. So there is showing at about 9.2. And it's a 10 microfarad. So I'm guessing this is microfarad scale then. Times one being microfarad, not farads. Okay, so now we know. It's a farad, it's a microfarad scale. So I've got to try and do some checks on this. Oh, take the thing off. Checking the temperatures inside here. 100 degrees in some spots. Hmm. Those resistors are getting pretty toasty. So 100 degrees, those ones I put in today. They're very hot. Not liking that. Might need big resistors for that. I might have to get some bigger ones. No, I should get some 2 watt resistors or something. Maybe 5 watts. And sort those out again, some bigger ones. I'm not liking that. And these ones up here in a high voltage supply. They're also pretty toasty. 90 degrees. Yeah, okay. Not liking those ones over there being 100 degrees though, that's really pushing it. Let's check this side. Valve was 160 odd there. The rectifier. Everything else is looking kind of alright though. Yeah. So I'm not liking those resistors over here. I think that's really a lot of stress on those. That's not good. 110 degrees I'm getting there. 112. There's going to be worse ones to put inside the case. So yeah, I think I need to change those again with some even bigger resistors, something can dissipate a bit more power because I don't think that's good so I'm going to try doing this calibration on this thing now so I've got a 100k resistor across it, set electrolytic mode I've got to put it in leakage position and a high voltage uh, what voltage do I want? I've forgotten 300 volts this could be ouchy and apparently I've got to adjust the top adjustment for the eye just closing Yeah, this valve isn't great. It's got a bit of overlap on it as well. This eye tube is not good. I think I didn't replace that tube. I'm going to have to get another one. So I've put it to discharge, which means it should be safe voltages on here again. This there is a little bit warm. <laughs> so the next one's a 1.5 meg. Got a 1.5 meg in there, set to 25 volts, minolytic. Put on leakage and this should be for oh, I just closed and it's almost closed, not quite. So yes, it's definitely in need of adjustment. Apparently this is the bottom adjustment. And that's very really touchy, I barely touched that and that changed. And this seems to be a little bit dirty actually. Yep, that's yeah, done. So using the same resistor, I've got to go to the paper position, leakage, and do the middle adjustment for the just closed. And that is not doing anything. That's interesting. Why is that doing nothing? What is happening now is the eye tube brightness is going up and down a little bit. It's flickering a little bit up and down, which is interesting. I think it's to do with the current draw. Yeah, it's because of the current draw. But I can't get that to open or shut. Hold on, I know why. Three volts. That's why. Now we'll do it. There we go, now it works. How do I voltage that? And just shutting is about there. OK, 
Okay, that's calibration's done then. So I'm just looking at the voltages on this eye tube to see why it's so dim. And the suspicion is that there's a current drop. I'm talking to a guy in the chat on my live stream who knows a lot more about valve stuff than I do. He thinks it could be getting dragged down. And I'm getting 11 volts here, which I believe should be 22 volts according to the circuit diagram. So that's half what it should be. The main supply rail, DC supply coming in here is 193, should be about 200, so that's okay. And the suspicion is that these two paper caps here may be a bit bad and leaking a little bit. So I was measuring just over here on this junction, got this resistor just here vertically, it's going to be closer. That was just the right there, I was measuring here. And just tracking, see about the eye brightness thing, because the eye, eye's not very bright. The diagram shows about 58 volts on it. And I was trying to figure out why I'm not getting 58 volts, getting something else. And the resistance at this point here, if I stick the probe on this tab, right there, and go to the chassis, that changes with the eye opening amount, or how much current is there. So I can actually see a linear progression of current. I can actually show you, maybe, with the voltage. Let me just zoom out slightly, I'll show you. And the eye may not even change. But if I stick the probe on here, stick that probe on there, because so it's the ground point. See the voltage there? I'm on um, capacitance mode right now, so I'm measuring capacitance so I can control the eye opening using the dial. So as you can see, as I go, it starts with quite high, it drops down, goes to the lowest point, that's where it's the, the minimum eye opening is, so that's, that's where the eye is the most open, and then I'll keep going in the same direction and it goes back up again. So what the eye opening is showing you is the minimum voltage at that point, or at least that's the reaction of what we're seeing here. So that's the eye is the most open, we get the minimum voltage. That might be helpful for someone. So this is the 22k resistor I pulled out. Does see something wrong with that? Maybe the fact it's got a big crack down the side of it might be a bit of a giveaway. <laughs> and it is bulged as well. Pretty interesting. And if I measure the resistance across it, now it's not in circuit. There you go, 51k. That's definitely no good. And this one here is the 10k which I pulled out. Which is measuring 15 in circuit. 16. It's actually worse as well. So yep, yeah, definitely both bad.